Hi everybody, welcome to a new PyTorch tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn how to work with tensors. So how we can create tensors and some basic operations that we need. We will also learn how to convert from NumPy arrays to PyTorch tensors and vice versa. So let's start. So in PyTorch, everything is based on tensor operations. From NumPy, you probably know arrays and vectors. And now in PyTorch, everything is a tensor. So a tensor can have different dimensions. So it can be 1D, 2D or even 3D or have more dimensions. So let's create an empty tensor. So first of all, we import torch, of course. And then we say x equals torch dot empty. And then we have to give it a size. So for example, if we just say one, then this is like a scalar value. So let's print our tensor. So this will print an empty tensor. So the value is not initialized yet. And now we can change the size. So for example, if we say three here, then this is like a 1D vector with three elements. So now if you run this, we see three items in our tensor. And now we can also make it 2D. So for example, let's say the size is two by three. So this is like a 2D matrix. So now I'll run this. And of course we can put even more dimensions in it. So now it would be 3D. And now, for example, now it would be 4D, but now I don't print it anymore because um, it's hard to, to see the, the four dimensions. But yeah, this is how we can create an empty uh, tensor. And we can also, for example, create a tensor with random values by saying torch.rand and then give it the size. So let's say two by two. And let's print our tensor again. Um, we can also, the same like in NumPy, we can say torch dot zeros. So this will put all um, zeros in it. Or we can say torch dot ones. So this will put ones in all the um, items. Um, then we can also give it a specific data type. So first of all, we can have a look at the data type by saying x dot d type. So if we run this, then we see by default, it's a float 32. But we can also give it uh, the d type parameter. And here we can say, for example, torch dot int. So now it's all integers. Or we can say torch dot double. Now it is doubles. Um, or we can also say, for example, float 16 just. Um, yeah. And now if you want to have a look at the size, we can do this by saying x dot size. And this is a function. So we have to use parentheses. So this will print the size of it. And we can also construct a tensor from data. So for example, from a Python list. So for example, here we can say x equals torch dot tensor. And then here we put a list with some elements. So let's say 2.5, 0.1. And then print our tensor. So this is also how we can create a tensor. And now let's talk about some basic operations that we can do. So let's create two tensors with random values of size two by two. So x and y equals torch dot rand two by two. So let's print x and let's print y and yeah so now we can do um, simple addition for example by saying set equals x plus y so and now let's print our c so this will do element wise addition so it will add up each of the 
um, entries. And we could also use set equals torch dot at and then X and Y. So this would do the same thing. Um, now we could also do an in place addition. So for example, if we say um, Y dot and then add underscore X and then print Y. So this will modify our Y and add all of the elements of X to our Y. And by the way, in PyTorch, every function that has a trailing underscore will do an in place operation. So this will modify the uh, variable that it is applied on. So yeah, so next to addition, of course, we could also use subtraction. So we can say C equals X minus Y, or this would be the same as C equals torch dot sub x and y. Now if you print c, then we can see the element by subtraction. Then we can also do a multiplication of each element. So this would be torch dot mal. And again, we can do everything in place by saying y dot mal underscore x. So this would modify our y. And then we can also do element wise division. So this would be torch dot diff. And yeah, so this is some basic operations that we can do with tensors. And then we can also do slicing operations like you are used to from NumPy arrays. So let's say we have a tensor of size, let's say five by three. And let's print this first. And now oh, print X. And now, for example, we can simply, um, or we can get all rows, but only one column. So let's use slicing. So we here use a um, colon for all the rows, but only the column zero. So Let's print the whole tensor and only this. So here we see we have only the first column, but all the rows. Um, or we can just say, um, for example, let's use the row number one, but all columns. So this would print the second row and all the columns. Um, then we can also just get one element. So the element at position one, one. So this would be and uh, this value. And by the way, right now it prints the tensor. And if we have a tensor with only one element, we can also say, um, we can call the dot item method. So this will get the actual value. But be careful, you can only use this if you have only one element in your tensor. So this will get the actual value. And yeah, now let's talk about reshaping a tensor. So let's say we have a tensor of size, let's say four by four and print our tensor. Um, and now if you want to reshape it, then we can do this by saying or by calling the view method. So we say y equals x dot view and then give it a size. So let's say we only want one dimension now. So let's print y. Um, so now it's only a one D vector. Um, and of course, the number of elements must still uh, be the same. So here we have four by four. So in total, it's also 16 values. And for example, if we don't want to put the uh, dimension or the value in one dimension, and we can uh, simply say minus one, 
and then specify the other dimension and PyTorch will automatically determine the right size for it. So now it must be a two by eight um, tensor. So we can also print the size again to have a look at the size. So this is size two by eight. So it's correctly determined the size. If we put a minus one here. So yeah, this is how we can resize tensors. And now let's talk about uh, converting from NumPy to a torch tensor and vice versa. So this is very easy. So first of all, let's import NumPy again or import NumPy as NP. And I think I have to, oh no, it's already installed here. So let's create a tensor first. So A equals torch dot, and let's create a tensor with ones of size five. So let's print our tensor. And now if we want to have a NumPy array, we can simply say B equals A dot NumPy and then print B. So now we have a NumPy array. So if we print the type of B, um, and then this will see and this will print that we have a NumPy and D array. So yeah, this is how we can create from a tensor to a NumPy array. Um, but now we have to be careful because if the tensor is on the CPU and not the GPU, then both objects will share the same memory location. So this means that if we change one, we will also change the other. So for example, if we print or if we modify um, B or A in place by saying A dot add underscore, remember all the underscore functions will modify our variable in place and add one. So if we add one to each element and now first let's have a look at our A tensor and now let's also have a look at our B NumPy array, then we see that it also added plus one to each of the elements here because they both point to the same memory location. So be careful here. And yeah, if you do want to do it the other way around, so if you have a, a NumPy array in the beginning, so let's say A equals NumPy, um, once of size five and then print a and now you want to have a torch tensor from a NumPy array then you can say b equals torch and then from underscore NumPy and then put the NumPy array so now we have a tensor and this will yeah, by default, this will put in the data type float 64. Of course, you could also specify the data type here um, if you want a different data type. Um, and now again, we have to be careful if we modify one. So if we modify, for example, the NumPy array by um, in incrementing each element. So now print our NumPy array so we see that it incremented each value and if we print b then we see that our tensor got modified too so again be careful here um yeah but this happens only if your tensor is on the gpu and this is one thing that we haven't talked about yet um because you can also and do the operations on the GPU, but only if this is available. So if you have also installed the CUDA toolkit and you can check that by saying if torch.cuda.is available. And so in my case on the Mac, it will, and this will return false. But for example, if you are on Windows and you have CUDA available, 
then you can specify your CUDA dev device by saying device equals torch dot device and then say CUDA here. And then if you want to create a tensor on the GPU, you can do this um, by saying x equals torch dot once. And then, uh, for example, give it the size and then say device equals device. Um, so this will create a tensor and put it on the GPU or you can first create it. So simply by saying uh, y equals torch dot once of size five and then you move it to your device, to your GPU, by saying y equals y dot t, and then device, so this will move it to the device. And now if you do an operation, for example, c equals x plus y, then this will be performed on the GPU and might be much faster. Um, yeah. But now you have to be careful because now if you would call c.numpy, then this would return an error because um, numpy can only handle CPU tensors. So you cannot convert a GPU tensor back to numpy. So then again, we would have to move it back to the CPU. So we can do this by saying c equals c dot to and then as a string CPU. So now it would be on the CPU again. So yeah, this is all the basic um, operations that I wanted to show you. And one more thing, a lot of times when a tensor is created, um, for example, torch dot um, once of size five, then a lot of times you see the argument requires grad equals true. So by default, this is false. And now if we print this, um, then we will also see here in our tensor that it will print requires grad equals true. So a lot of times in code, you will see this. And this will tell PyTorch that it will need to calculate the gradients for this tensor later in your optimization steps. So whenever well, this means that whenever you have a variable in your model that you want to optimize, then you need the gradients. So you need to specify requires grad equals true. But yeah, we will talk about this more in the next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.